sort of the question that we had, well, the questions we had coming into this room, but well, how could we do the various imaging things? You know, all three of us that were, were merged together had different, you know, EM, Sacrotron, uh, for essence. Uh, and so what we ended up with in terms of the project is, you know, we should actually do a proper kind of survey and analysis, knowing what we know now in 2023 of what are the different kind of engine modalities that, that we could apply. And you can sort of think of this as basically 15 years later updating table five from the, 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 the whole brain emulation roadmap. Also with some additional uh, some additional quantitative metrics. So this table, they, they just had resolution and uh, like maybe uh, with one, you know, uh, anisotropic resolutions, like two different resolution numbers. But then we also want to talk about time, that's sort of like the, the, the amount of volume we can scan per second and the cost of building each instrument. Um, and uh, the number of different membrane proteins that you can tag, and uh, the extent to which you can barcode cells, because that really changes the, the, the resolution requirements for tracing processes. Um, so a bunch of different quantitative metrics we want to incorporate, and then there's also a bunch of different qualitative questions uh, that we wanted to ask, like, what are we going to do about tissue sectioning with the ver various uh, you know, perfusion, freezing, and uh, you know, vibratome and cryostat slicing, all various techniques which you maybe combine in various ways, but then you know, are, you, are you actually going to, to get a, a high quality sample or is some, something along the way going to just kind of basically not work in practice? Um, so I want to ask people who like really have experience with these various techniques about kind of what goes wrong and what are the possible ways that we can mitigate it, either with chemistry or mechanical engineering or just being a little bit more clever about how we combine things. Um, and we also want to ask about like robustness of, of the uh, the samples, like after you have processed them in a certain way, do you still have uh, samples that you can then put in like cold vacuum storage and take out later and do more things to them, or do you just completely destroy it along the way as you're doing the process? That's another kind of qualitative aspect. Um, and then there's also a, a question that's sort of a meta level question about what, uh, what do, are we actually going to need in terms of tra translating structure to function? Um, do we need to see, for example, the exact size of the synapse? if we're going to do uh, identification of synapse weights uh, by morphology, or can we just see flu a fluorescent signal, how many receptors are there in this region without having enough resolution to really get the size of the synapse, is that going to be enough? The other question is, just to add something to that, is um, how much noise is there in the data set? Um, how much, because uh, different data sets can come with different levels of noise, um, what's the sharpness of the contrast between one voxel and another, so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. And usually the trade-off there is time. Yes, yes. Right. Uh, so then we can do some various kind of trade-off analyses looking at the Pareto frontier along different figures of merit um, and use that to kind of uh, inform the R&D portfolio selection for, um, for the sort of scanning portion of a, of a whole brain emulation uh, project. Uh, and so that would be the way that it sort of impacts the uh, roadmap. No direct AI safety implications, uh, except insofar as the whole whole brain emulation uh, endeavor has AI safety implications. I don't think there's anything we can do about, about DTD there. Um, and uh, yeah, that sort of directly fits into uh, contributing to the next version of the, of the roadmap. Uh, so it's purely an analysis kind of uh, desk uh, desktop project. Um, so we don't need a huge amount of funding, but we may need to uh, convene people for uh, you know for a few weeks um, here and there over the summer in order to actually get this work done. Yes. Doing it in one day <laughs> did not work. Right. <laughs> I'd like Ken to talk a little bit more about like why he thinks that EM is not the right step. Um, God, really put me on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was so so the. Um, uh, uh, I think the I, I think what I was saying is that uh, the the barcoding approach is a real game changer. And and let me let me uh, one of the things we were identifying is kind of what is the resolution that is needed with barcoding. And so I don't have an answer to that. But um, uh, there is a there's a project called Mouse Light where they. Uh, uh, where they don't do any expansion microscopy, they're just using, uh, uh, they're limited by light, um, uh, resolution of the light microscope. And they do whole mouse brain imaging by scanning uh, a couple hundred microns into a block and then uh, removing the tissue and a couple hundred microns into the block. But this, uh, they've cleared the whole mouse brain and they've only uh, 
uh, uh, lit up about a dozen neurons with fluorescence, okay, with viral in injection. And yet they can trace those single neurons all the way across the brain. And so the idea is that if this is really at the level of, if barcoding is at the level of being absolutely distinguishing each neuron from each other neuron, then you should, then the resolution uh, needed could go way down because we have a proof of concept already in mouse life that if you make everything transparent except the neuron that you're interested in, you can trace it. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and if the barcoding is good enough to essentially computationally turn off all the other neurons except the one that you're that barcode, uh, then, then yeah, even these, these 16 nanometer type of uh, 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 vestments that we were throwing out, out earlier might, uh, might be far too conservative. Mm -hmm. like but that requires a barcoder that has, for E11, 37 different colors. Uh, but apparently, 30 colors is, is unrealistic. Yeah. So yeah. that's something yeah. Well, I'm about. also thinking about mouse break. So, so um, the other thing, just to add, and, and, and so EM, EM has this critical problem, and, and actually would have the same critical problem, I believe, of, of having to, if there is a loss, you can lose the connectivity uh, of everything downstream of the loss, and the barcoding would not have that issue. So it, it would be a real game changer. So um, I'll, I'll, I'll continue nice. to yeah, the, the nice thing about X-ray though is that you would not have to cut it anywhere near as much. So maybe there would be some there'd be loss, less loss. Yeah. yeah, it would be exponentially less because you could cut it at the millimeter or even centimeter scale, um, and you could actually make like almost like things that would are the similar size and shape as french fries out of the brain. <laughs> um, <laughs> because what you can do is you can image the, um, uh, uh, the XY, um, like little tomograms across the XY axis, and then um, the beam would pass through um, everything upwards on the french fry, mm -hmm. and then you could just move up, section the next section, or image the next section of tomograms and so on, and that would allow you to essentially minimize the amount of time that the beam is actually damaging the tissue. And we have about five minutes for Q&A as well. Oh yeah, um, sorry, Joanne, did you have something? Oh no, I was just going to request that Ken also talk about why it, like lossless uh, cutting is important. Um, yeah, so very briefly, uh, I think that uh, any of these techniques, including the expansion microscopy, it seems, if I'm not misunderstanding, that there is a requirement to cut even before expansion. Mm -hmm. And so uh, it, it's a concrete open problem that spans the whole range of these things. It may be boring, it, it, but, and it may be easily solved. Uh, that's a good thing. Uh, but it's, it's, it's in that kind of range. And like the reason is like it's really hard to cut like a very soft brain. Or it can make you a very hard brain. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Um, you can like tear it to shear. The, there's mechanical shear forces, yeah. yeah. I want to look into uh, femtosecond uh, laser micro machining. I haven't seen anyone try that yet. Okay, any questions, suggestions? I also wrote a few sample audience question points here, like what still needs to be fleshed out? Is that part of the project that AI can help with? Um, that was one of the real earlier. How will this project contribute to AI safety? How will this project fit into the general whole validation work? Feel free to be inspired by this, um, and those will do later. Um, questions, comments? Well, uh, Allison, actually, uh, I have sort of an answer to one of your questions. Great. Um, the parts that still need to be fleshed out. Um, so I think we really need to nail down some more of like the optical physics, particularly for the x-ray part, but maybe also for the light sheet microscopy part of what the actual limits are for the hardware side of it. Mm -hmm. Because I feel like I'm coming at it from saying, okay, synchrotrons are really, really good, and I know a little bit about them. Um, but I also, but I know more about sort of this tissue treatment, chemistry, biology stuff, and we can expand it, we can do these different things to the chemistry, but I still want to have somebody who has a really strong, or at least a stronger physics background, particularly in the area of synchrotrons and x-ray physics, to help to, like, flesh out, okay, how far can you take it? And I think the same goes for light sheet microscopy, people who are, and maybe maybe Todd knows enough, maybe he doesn't, I'm not sure because he's not here right now, but um, the I mean, what are what can you really do if you really 
tried to build a really, really good light sheet microscope that was optimized for this purpose. Um, so for, I, I just think we need physics people, basically. OK. What well, would you be doing with one, two, and three K here? <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, what are we doing with 1, 2, and 3K? So probably what we'll be doing is um, maybe having our own conference is, is what yeah. we discussed. Um, we might have sort of our own little conference where we fly in each other, Bobby Kasturi, maybe anyone else we want to invite, and um, uh, maybe Adrian Miner, I'm, I'm not sure if he's into this or not, but could ask him, um, and just have sort of a, a concentrated you said maybe even multiple times, um, but I, I mean, I, I think I think like two two weeks total. Maybe okay, two weeks total. Different. Okay, different. interesting, interesting. Yeah, intense. very intense. <laughs> yeah, and then and then probably some like some of our vol our time volunteering just to do it outside to do literature research and communicate with each other by email. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, thank you guys. Mm -hmm.